¡Qué emoción! <laughs> All right, welcome back to the broadcast. This is your boy Luis. This is your homegirl Kenya. And uh, you know, we're about to, uh, we're about to let, we're about to blast off. Buckle up. <laughs> Uh, you know, there's a couple things that uh, I wanted to talk about, man, and uh, I'm glad you can make it uh, to the show. One thing's first that I've noticed that uh, we don't do enough, or a lot of people don't do enough, is uh, improve our brain, right? Like, almost like do a daily exercises for the brain, because it's very important. Um, and also, I didn't, I didn't mention about, I'm in space right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in space. Big chilling in space I'm, right I'm now. But uh, some some tips and tricks to uh, help you, you know, keep that to noggin. Get space? No, 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 no. <laughs> tips and tricks to keep that noggin up to, up to date. You know, uh, is spend spend some time each day re- reading, writing, or both. Uh, to never stop learning, whether it's taking a class, go to a lecture, or acquiring a new skill. Uh, Tackling challenging crossword puzzles or Sudoku puzzles. See, a lot of people don't like Sudoku. And I do actually. You do? Okay, yeah. Fun fact, kind of weird, crazy fact. Um, last year, when I bought my house, I knew I was going to be overwhelmed and busy. And I was like, the last thing I needed to be is on my phone. So mm-hmm. in one of my runs like to the store, I bought a Sudoku book. Mm-hmm. And I just started doing it. But then my head kind of hurt after a couple. So I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Brain going too hard. <laughs> yes. But I, I think it's a really good, I think it's a really good way to like get that, get, just get your brain going. Um, because there's, it's really, you're just doing numbers and you're constantly like, you know, just, it's, I guess it's not really math, but you're constantly just seeing numbers and people don't like you're, that though. You're critical thinking because you're like, okay, if I do, you know, if this goes here, like can context everything clues. else yeah mm-hmm. can everything else work yeah so you're definitely thinking for sure yeah al cien estas al cien cien y pasaditas another one is playing memory games board games card games or video games and I truly believe this and you know I've told this to people and, and I'll, I guess it depends on how much you you use it like video games for example like people you know they can you can play for hours but uh, just playing like a little bit here and there just to get the brain and the muscles just you know right where you need to be Mm -hmm. it's the way to go man and the last one was just to do like a hobby that requires you to focus so you know just anything that really keeps you busy i think i want to say and so yeah um i wish i could have i I haven't i I did the same thing actually um i ended up getting me a sudoku book Mm -hmm. but i haven't used it yet i used to do it on my phone that was like my that was your your form. I yeah, saw yeah, yeah. that on on your phone. It's actually easier. I feel like because it, mm-hmm. it like so, well, somebody had it, and I was like, oh shit, this is way easier. Like, why am I doing the complicated version? I know, right? Yeah. No, but, but when I bought it, I didn't use it for a couple months or a couple weeks, and then I was like, all right, I bought this for a reason, so I should break it out. So I did. Might as well. Wait, which difficulty did you get? Because most of them are like. Um, I don't think I got the like hardest one. I probably just got the simple version. <laughs> but and your brain I, like, was hurt. <laughs> look, look, I did like some at the beginning, then I skipped to the middle, and then I did some at the end. So I didn't like go in a sequence. Oh, I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah. Um, when I play, I play on like expert. Uh, mm. yeah, and and I try expert. to like, yeah, it's not it's and at that point it's not even enough like, uh. If will I complete it, it's more of like how fast can I complete it? See, that's what I did. Like when I would do mine, I would be like, all right, I got to do this in like so many like minutes or whatever. Yeah. Seconds or whatever. So And without well, mistakes. Like, yeah. Because you know how like in, well, on the phone you can put mistakes, but you know, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. But uh, I think it's, I think you should, people should do that. People should actually keep the, keep the noggin on its toes, <laughs> mm-hmm. big toe on the gas, you know, bonos. <laughs> <laughs> Hold uh, on, buckle up guys. <laughs> another thing here, and this is something that I wanted to talk about before, but I didn't get to technically do like a normal episode last week because I got my grandparents, which by the way, a lot of people did like that. So thank you guys. <laughs> they actually really did. And they were saying all a bunch of nice stuff and everything. 
uh, about them and you know whatnot. But anyways, uh, and this is what I was telling you earlier, that apparently after decades of research, a new study links optimism and prolonged life. Researchers found that individuals with greater optimism are, like, are more likely to live longer and to achieve exceptional longevity that is living to age 85 or older. And I'll try to sum it up, not try to talk to the whole article, but it pretty much says that they, inter- they research, they studied almost 70,000 women and like 14, 1,500 men. And they started them each for a, a certain period of time. So for the women, they studied them for like 10 years. Uh, yeah. And then for the men, which is only 1,500, it was less of them. They studied them for 30 years. And mm-hmm. they, le- they, and then they also uh, did uh, survey measures like uh, based on their health and such as like diet, smoking, alcohol, all those type of habits. And when they were compared on their initial levels, the researchers found that the most optimistic men and women demonstrated on, on average an 11 to 15% longer lifespan and had 50 to 70% greater odds of reaching 85 years or older. Damn. That's, yeah, that's crazy. And they don't, they don't show, they don't know exactly how, they're unclear exactly how that is. Mm-hmm. But I think, it really just means to like have a positive attitude, I guess, and just about anything I, I, I want to say. You know how people always say that like and um, just about everywhere that – Like a positive you have, mindset. You have to have a positive mindset. Kind of almost believe the stuff that you're trying to attract also. Like, you know, you know how people say like if you want this, you actually got to like want it, work for it, but also like almost – act like you already have it yes yeah i've heard that concept before Mm -hmm. it's true um kind of like it's so weird because this morning um i was trying to like watch the video of your grandparents and then this other video showed up which talked about not necessarily the same thing but similar topic um Mm -hmm. it was something about suffering and just how people get over suffering i think that was the title um Mm -hmm. and it was only 20 minutes 12 minutes so i was I was like, all right, let me listen to this. And that person was saying that um, there are factors, there are external external factors that obviously cause suffering, but they're also the biggest factor that causes suffering is yourself. And so you have to have not necessarily a, a positive mindset, but you have to accept. And then if you accept things like everything bad and all that suffering, you get over it quicker. That's what I took. Like, that was my intake out of that. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's a combination of that and, like, having a positive mindset, how everybody has been saying. You have, like, it's not the the circumstances. It's how you react. Yeah, I can see that. mm -hmm. I feel like like I've talked about this before, so I might be repeating it. But, but yeah, um, a lot of times it's how you react to things. And sometimes it can catch you off guard. And I think that's why... Uh, every single time is like a lesson because every single time is like a different scenario. It's not the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes you're bound to act just a little bit different or, or sometimes it's like a surprise. You don't know how to act. You know, I think that, when right. you, you know, when you lose like loved ones and stuff, like that's a big event. You don't know how to act. You're like, like wait, like what's going on? You know, like, what do I do? Yeah. And, you know, I think that's what it is. And so, uh, I want to say that I don't remember who I told this before, but I feel like a lot of times is that we have to um, really just like shoot for, for the best Mm -hmm. because regardless of like, whether it's a positive or a negative outcome, like you learn from it. And I think with that being said, like nothing can ever be so bad because you either grow from it, like learning from it. So you're growing or, or it's just like a positive thing and it's like you know right. what I mean? Like it's like, yeah. oh, I can I can work. Whatever it is. Right. I think seeing things as a lesson or as a learning experience is a good way. I'm drinking um, hot tea, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I on the other hand am drinking wine. Oh. Well, so cheers. 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 <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
it's because um, today, you know, I went to the gym and I did all everything that I had to do. Mm. And uh, sometimes uh, it's hard to sleep, man. But that hot tea, it'll put you like. The hot tea hit kicks in. <laughs> You know, plus I'm in space, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, but like, it, it's, it's weird how things like that happen. And it, and it's hard to like, get people to realize that, you know, I, I think I, I can't only talk about my experiences. So, you know, just in the last couple of weeks, it's been, it's been fun, but only because I've been putting in the work on the things that I want to do. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that people realize it and it feels good. A little bit, it gives me like a little bit of like ner- ner- nervousness. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh shit, like, you know? Yeah. But I feel like at the end of the day, um, if it wasn't for me actually just putting all the work in, like I wouldn't be where, where I am now, you know? And This is true. So, you know, I think... I hope that I could live up to 85. I do feel pretty optimistic, but I don't know. And I don't know if you know about this, but I'm a lefty. And lefties, apparently, they expected to live like five years less than an actual right-handed person. Uh, I did not know that. That's because of like accidents, I feel like. So, you know, a lot of things are meant for a right-handed person. So whether it's like using like a certain type of gun, a chainsaw, scissors. I mean, I don't know, just the list goes on, honestly. It's wow. It's pretty tough. And so yeah. I don't know. So maybe it'll balance out. That's crazy. <laughs> Being optimistic, feeling lefty, and then I'm just Being, like living the same as a normal person. <laughs> Being optimistic is going to be like that five-year push. Yeah. And, you know, you get your pros and cons. I know what mentioned it a little bit when it was left hander's day and yeah that's an actual day left hander's day um (laughs) and and, uh the thing that they were talking about is which is kind of sucks is that left-handed people are excluded from psychological studies um and the reason why is because there's there's only 10 10 percent of the world is left-handed so it's like Mm. not it's it's not enough so if they were to include left-handed people into the studies the then the studies wouldn't be accurate because that makes sense. It, it wouldn't affect everybody it would just only affect 10 percent and you know so and i didn't know this I, I actually found this out like a like a week ago and i was like what the fuck? so whenever you whenever you hear studies about women and men most of the time it's right-handed people so i'm not saying that left-handed people are like a totally different breed but they kind of are um, I was reading into it that we like, I don't know how it works. Cause I, 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 we do use both parts of our brain, but I feel like left-handed people lean more towards the right side because mm-hmm. the right side controls the left, the left side. And you know, that, whatever that, in, that includes like imagination, creativity, arts, that kind of thing, the fun stuff, the colorful stuff, you know, and the left side mm-hmm which is most right-handed people is like linear thinking, logic, math, mathematics, uh, that kind of stuff. Like the boring stuff, <laughs> <laughs> which in my mind, I think the so lefties are cool and everyone else is boring. Uh, yeah, that's pretty exactly what I'm that's, saying. Yeah. That was the conclusion. All right. And, um, so yeah, you know, I think it's, it's tough being out here, being a lefty, but, uh, uh, I like you it ain't too bad <laughs> was um was um doing like sitting in the in the classroom desk was that hard because you always had like the right Man, side it was some that bs sucked. bro it was straight up bs like uh just first of all the because the desk are like on the right side and mm-hmm. then i have to like write on the left and then i'm like i can't write yeah scissors was a pain in the ass i mean dude i've I feel like there was a student that uh, would sit next to me that was left-handed and I was right hand. Obviously I want to say, I don't know what year or anything, but it was at first it was like, okay, whatever, you know? And then Mm -hmm. I, it has, it had to be in high school because that's when you like had all your books and everything right there. And Mm -hmm. so sometimes it was like, 
like I felt bad because I was like, I need this space and you need this space and we're in the same side. Um, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, it sucks, dude. Like especially eating beside uh, right-handed people. Oh, yeah. You know, bumping arms and things like that. It's a struggle. But I mean, honestly, I can't complain too much on it. Like it's actually been pretty chill. Uh, mm-hmm. they, ask, they also say that left-handed people have to be a little bit more aware of things. Uh, because they have to constantly like switch back and forth, you know? So when people use right-handed, like you're constantly using that side of the brain, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And for left-handed people, it's like you're using your left and then all of a sudden you got to switch because something's right-handed and you got to, you got to use your non-dominant hand. And apparently that's a thing. So yeah, like I, it's weird when I do some, like, cause I do hair. If you didn't know, I am a cosmetologist. And so sometimes I do hear, like when I was learning to do, like holding all the equipment and stuff, I would find myself using my left hand, um, mm-hmm. which is weird. Like I you would chop like all the hair off. Ellos querían trasquilarse, so that's what they got. Um, yeah, there's, there's times. And then sometimes I try to do my makeup using my left hand just to like get some more, like just, I feel like, it, I don't want to have it just be useless. You know, at some point, if my right hand gets injured, I'm not going to know how to do anything. And there's a lot of times when, oh, when I also yeah. tried writing with my left hand. That was it's pretty bad. It's not quick, but if I really wanted to, I guess I could get away with it. You could, yeah. Yeah, I guess it's the same way. Like, I never try to learn to write with my right hand. Like, that wasn't ever like a... A thing. Mm, to, to, you know... So but I, I, yeah. I use both hands. I, I, I want to say I'm a little ambidextrous, I want to say. But I don't know. What were you going to tell me those, uh, those questions? I know you didn't want to tell me before we started. Oh, yeah. So, so I got some juicy que- – well, not juicy questions, but I got some good questions. Okay. Um, let me pull them up. Ah, just big chilling in space, man. You know the vibes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I can't. Okay. All right. So let's see here. The first question. Oh God. Well, this is the first one that I, that I mentioned earlier. So what is one thing you wish you had known when you began your career? Mm, Like the podcast or the podcast or whatever whatever you believe your career path is hmm i would say this applies also just like in general like adulting and like anything after college mm-hmm. anything after you had to start working i guess maybe well this could apply to everything but maybe not went out as much when i was younger um Mm -hmm. that could have and and instead of use that time to like prepare for the things that i wanted to do today Mm, so uh, you said not going out as much not going out as much yeah like i mean it's good like nosotros like we would like nos pasamos and we would Mm -hmm. always go out and i mean there was a point in time we would go out like on wednesday like wednesdays thursdays fridays saturdays (laughs) sometimes sundays like yeah wait (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and and it's like it was fun it really was like mm-hmm. it was fun and i definitely lived it but we kind of overdid it so i can't say it. like it wasn't just me it was a lot of people that i was with but i feel like if i would have not went out as much and spent some more time on the things that i wanted to do maybe I, it would have helped me a little bit easier maybe prepare a little bit better on mm-hmm. things and i think that could apply to anybody too yeah um but but so- some people are the opposite, though. Yeah, I was going to say, but do you think you would have, like, enjoyed your youth or – because I think think about it, like, obviously you enjoyed it. You probably had a good time. Maybe you did overdo it. Maybe there are times that you could have been like, I can, you know, step this one out. But at that time, do you think you would have done that? you think you would have stayed back and been like, oh, let me prepare for 10 years from now or for seven, five years from now? Like, do you think that was your vibe at that time? Definitely not. Like – when I was when I was young, like I was thinking of like YOLO, 
Mm -hmm. you only want you only live once that's the motto whatever you know that that was it right i think that's what it was it was definitely not on my mind to like to do something i mean Mm -hmm. maybe it was like i did have some i have things in in the back of my head right but i was like i was i was young everybody's young we had more time to hang out uh less responsibilities at the time uh, I was I was also working, so I was able to like go do things on my own with my own money, like spend so, money, mm-hmm. and so and explore and you know. So I don't know. I mean, there was there was a fun balance that mm-hmm. I wish I could have recognized sooner. So that's that's all it is. So yeah, I think that you know when you're young, you probably sh- you probably you should go out. I think you should you should go out. You know, go out, have a drink, have two, fuck it. You know what? Tómate la botella. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, I don't know. It, it's, it's hard to say, man. I can't speak for everybody, only for myself. Yeah, it's hard. I think it's hard being, like, I've been a little bit of both. Um, it's hard being responsible and being young. It really is hard. I feel like you, from my perspective, it kind of, like, you're good, but nobody is in that mindset. So you kind of feel out of place. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you get FOMO. Sometimes you're like, why am I doing this? Like I'm dumb or I'm like stupid sometimes. Like, you know, I feel like it's, it also depends on your mindset because um, obviously if you're so determined and so like all for it, you're going to be like, this is the right path. And this is exactly what I need to be doing. And I don't care that everybody is out drinking spending their money losing sleep you're happy doing what you're doing um so i've been like in both aspects where it's like i feel ridiculous being that responsible and where i feel very proud being responsible and where and i've been reckless and had a great time yeah i can agree with that we've both been there yeah Uh, out of another quick question out of both of us out of us two who do you think's the most responsible one? Oh, oh, and before you answer, if the people that don't know, I don't know if there's new listeners or what. Uh, this is Kenya, my cousin. So uh, Ooh, I, she lives in Illinois. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know because people I don't say, know how you are, how responsible you are. So girl, I, <laughs> the, the cat, just, you know exactly how I am. I feel like if anybody, uh, you would know me better than most people because. I mean, I we grew up together. We literally mm-hmm. were a year apart in age. Yeah, we, we. I know you well, but I know you as like, like family, like just vacationing and trips. So, like as far as responsibility, I mean, I've gotten to know you. I guess through the podcast, like I see that you're responsible at keeping up and maintaining, and you're committed. So it's tough. Committed it's tough, and boys, it's tough. Yes. yes. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I feel like it's a tie. How, what do you, do you think, do you think one or the other? I think you're more responsible. I'm just going to go ahead and put that put it <laughs> out there. But I think Point you're, for Kenya. but the only reason I say that you're more responsible and this could be, I don't know what the word is, but I think it's because you're a girl. I was, and okay. You were going to say That's something? what I was thinking that you were mm-hmm. going to say. And I could be wrong, but I feel like because I feel like girls in general, like, I feel like they, I want to say they're more responsible or they're just more Naturally. like, or they're just more like, like in, in it for like, I don't know. I don't know. But I, just, I do feel like they're more responsible. And I feel like guys, they're kind of like last more minute. Back more laid back yeah i'm straight i do agree Shit, i do agree man. you're straight chilling in space bro <laughs> no i agree i feel like there is a study that says that obviously i don't have the details in front of me but i think that is very true like just going that goes in hand with like girls being more responsible and maturing at an earlier age and mm-hmm. then um and I think it also has to do with personality, of course, your life circumstances and situation. Um, but yeah, I mean, and I'm also a little bit older. So there's a lot of factors. I'm that an only child. Too. So I technically like it's me or nobody. That's true. 
but I'm also the oldest. I mean, I'm also the oldest out of my yeah. siblings. So like I had to learn first before. I mean, I didn't have an older sibling to also tell me either. Right. So I can kind of relate to that a little bit. But yeah. as I grew older, like, I mean, it wasn't bad, you know, we mm -hmm. like, especially now that like I was of age and my brother was of age to like drink. And uh, I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to drink a couple, man. You, you drive, you know, I would let him <laughs> drive and, you know, big chili in the back. <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, like you're dd i'm gonna get wasted take care of me <laughs> that's see you tomorrow <laughs> no and, but I, yeah i don't think okay so yeah i feel like possibly i am more responsible but i think i don't think you're that far off i think that i mean i don't think at so all, at all times you've been pretty well yeah i don't like to be like i like to be organized i do like to have my things you know, in order, I don't, mm -hmm. I want to know where everything's at, you know, wherever I put everything. Um, but yeah, I don't know. What, what were we talking about before? We got off topic. We, we were talking about what would you like to know um, before oh, yeah, you yeah, started yeah. your career. But, what about you? Um, that's a great question. I guess I have to think about it for a second, but just that things take more time than what you think they'll take oh i know yeah i think that i i knew things took time and even though i knew that i was still like yeah mm -hmm. like half the time that i it really does um mm -hmm. and that work never ends like you never you can never do too much. Like if you think, all right, you know, this project, I'm going to pour my heart out and then we're going to be set up. Not that, not that like, I don't know this, but I guess just like have it more in perspective of how this is a, you know, ongoing situation. You know, you can pour your heart out now, but in a couple months, years, you'll have another project and you'll pour your heart out, heart out. and you got to be ready for like that continuous effort. Oh, added on to that. I feel like, Another cool thing that people, you know, especially if it's people younger, like listening, because I have realized that younger people do listen also. I think one also thing would be to, and that sounds, sounds so, super corny, but it's really just like do the things that you like, that you love. Yes. Because yeah. like, you know, we, we you're saying that we're going to be constantly working when you want to work, you want to make it feel like you're not working, doing the things that you like. So in that case, that you might as well do all the cool things that you like and make it like a job. Yep. Something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I agree. <laughs> That's it. That's a wrap. <laughs> no, but I agree because I used to hear that all the time and I was like, okay, I get it, something that you like. And then I was like, like, I get it. And then... I worked in different, had just different jobs, obviously, um, a couple uh, during college and whatnot, and then mm -hmm. high school, and then, like, now my professional career, and it's, like, I understand why everybody's, like, do something that you love, because this is, you gotta wake up every day, and if you hate your job, it's gonna be miserable, so, yeah, do something that you like, because it'll be easier to get up every morning, like, the thing is, there's going to be hard days. There's always going to be hard days. It, there, you just, they don't go away. They don't go away, but the way you handle it, the way you... Like, <laughs> the hard days, they're like, and you're like, yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> they're just not leaving. <laughs> yeah. No, they, like, there's always going to be hard days, and then just know that there'll be a better day after that. But during that, like, if you, you know, if you like your job and it's a miserable day, then at least there's something about your job that you're going to enjoy and it's not going to be fully miserable. Yeah. That's so true. I think, I think that's the most important thing that you could actually tell anybody. Um, if you don't like it, you got to get out, do something else. And I think now that we're like in our twenties, I think it's mm -hmm. good to like, to try things out, you know, and try new things, whatever works. I mean, we have time to, to start again, you know, I think even when you're 32, but I mean, it starts to get a little, uh, you better have your shit crazy, together by yeah. then but but yeah as far as like the 20s you might as well just you know figure it out figure out what you want to do i think Definitely. this goes this goes back to like uh doing anything 
I think fear is like fear stops a lot of people. It stops me. It stopped me in a lot of things. Um, I don't know, man. I think I think you just gotta like say f it, go for it, and just you know get it done. Yep. I feel like after you complete something that you were so scared to do, you feel so much better. Like you're like you just feel like powerful. You know, you're like damn, like what this was stopping me, right? You know? this is stopping me like it you, the obstacles are not even as big as you made it seem you know they're nothing you know yeah look at me your boy i'm in space let's go Vamanos. <laughs> <laughs> i can't you're having a good time there's in here the, there's earth <laughs> hi everyone you're like hi everyone from looks up like, space looks like it's about to rain i'm just kidding <laughs> we actually had a big storm today Oh, oh, okay. And now we're talking about rain. And I wanted, uh, this is good to plug this in. So I read this the other, uh, when was it? I read this the other, uh, like a couple of days ago. And I was talking about rainfall, man. And how I had the math on it, but I lost it. Where's that? Here it is. So when it rains, when it rains, people write more negative face. My bad. People write more negative posts on Facebook. And each post adversely affects about one to two people to other people. Research discovered the negative posts spread like a virus, eventually impacting people's moods in cities without rainfall. So apparently, I don't know why, but when it rains, I guess it, I guess it makes it feel like a gloomy type of day or weather or whatever. Mood, gloomy mood. And thus there's an increase of people writing negative posts on Facebook that is affecting one to two other people that are friends with them. Eventually those posts can spread like a virus and other people in cities where it's not raining are affected by it. Isn't that weird and crazy? That's so crazy. That's crazy. Like, that uh, In a way that kind of goes back to like just – in general, like you being negative, like if if I'm negative to you or somebody, and and affects somebody, it could potentially the if they don't react the the right way, they could also be negative against somebody else, and it just it's kind of like a domino effect, you know? Yeah, so it's you, almost like that uh, like law like you like uh, you attract what you are type of thing, right? It could it could be yeah. I mean it's. I mean, what we say is like when people are treating you a certain way, um, it's not nothing against the per the other person. It's really uh, the person that's acting like that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a reflection of themselves or what they're going through. So, you know, when you're working at a, like a, uh, a job where you constantly talk to customers and you're like, and they're mad. <laughs> I mean, they're just, they're letting you have it, right? And you're getting mad. You're like, man. I didn't do anything like this isn't my fault blah 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 it's literally like and it has nothing to do with you but but the customer like it's their like they they're dealing they're with their own their, pistol, yeah. personal whatever you know and i don't know i think with that being said um we just need to be careful with what we say i guess uh this I is a podcast so like that's that's complicated it's complicated because like i want to say I, a lot of times I want to say whatever is on my mind, like, mm -hmm. you know, because nobody's going to agree on what everything I say or someone or whoever, you know, no one's going to agree on mm -hmm. everything everybody says. Yeah. I feel like everything that you hear you like take in is influential. It's, a, it's important. It like really kind of builds you and molds you into just how you, you know, move forward and how you go every day in life. Um, it's also yeah it's hard yeah, it's hard it's hard because i think i think the more you practice it the easier it gets maybe or it's just not as tough um but you got to get out there you know you got to take all those shots oh get, for sure you know <laughs> it's i don't think a lot of people know that or they do and they just don't do it i don't know i don't know and if just me saying it helps somebody then you know Mm -hmm. That cabron, that cabron. That's true. 
Let me, me see what other questions I can ask while you. <clears throat> okay, ask me another one. While we have you out here. Kenya, the, uh, she's the, uh, she's is, the interviewer. This is like a big loaded question. Oof. So let's see. Let's see. What is your biggest failure and what did you learn from it? Hmm. Biggest so far, failure. because I mean, you're young and so it could uh, be anything I could, I feel like, like, let's say any failure. Yeah, like whatever you think your biggest failure is. So let's say, I don't know. Mm. Hmm. I don't That's know. That's a hard one. I mean, That's a hard one, right? It is. Um, I'm trying to think of like all my failures. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you the one thing though. I feel like I've failed more than I've won. Um, if that makes sense. Mm, yeah. You know, the, you know that going back to like photography the podcast like i've failed a lot and people don't realize that uh you know those two things are like they're like they're like my babies right so i'm over here i got one baby over here and then i got another baby here and you know good, good guy got. <laughs> you got twins over there and i don't know like i just you know from just constantly learning to to not get into things that I wanted to get and just fell in really ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I don't know how to go about it, but I do know that people don't see your, people only see your success, your success, I guess. And they don't see how hard you've tried putting in the work. That's uh, true. You know, just this last weekend, I was out um, for one of my friend's birthdays and he had like a little, little get together and yeah there was there was a few people there that were you know they were they were talking to me and telling me about the podcast and a bunch of other things and you know making me feel good right and and it feels good and it feels good to have feedback and that people really do like the podcast and everything um but what they don't realize is that like i've worked a lot in this this isn't even this is more like a hobby this isn't even like the like the main thing the red the bread maker, the bread. Right. And, you know, I don't think they realize how much time I put into this stuff. Like, you know, to edit the, the episodes, um, you know, sometimes it's like three to four hours. It's a lot of time. And, like, sometimes, like, something happens and, like, you got to restart or, like, or you know, or when I do, like, actual videos, which I'm trying to do videos now because that's what the people wanted. And I sh we should have done this a long time ago, honestly. And the videos take a lot of time. Like when the, the, my grandpa, the video with my grandparents, that one was like, it took like an hour to, just to set up. I mean, it was cables. It was cables. It was a, just so many wires and things that just needed just to be put into place. And it, isn't, it didn't look like it was, but it was. It was a lot of stuff. I mean, even my grandpa was like, Ay, son muchos cables. You know, like talking about, damn, son. It's so Did you much... take any behind the scenes footage or like a picture like no. of the setup? I think my, I think my mom, she, she was there too. So she, I think she got like a video or something. But it's tough, man. And like, it's just tough. It's just tough. And like, so, you know, people don't see that. And I don't post it either. I mean, it's the same thing with Instagram or social media. Like people only mm -hmm. see the good stuff. But I mean, it's it's just like anybody else like you're constantly felling and and you know gary v says it the best you know i don't know if you know who he is but he's like an influencer and he's always talking about how you just you got to shoot for failing because the more times you fail like the there's a good chance of succeeding and it's kind of true it's like you're just constantly taking all the shots you know mm -hmm. you might as well you're bound to you're bound to get some luck out of it not even luck it's just effort, you know? Yeah. I think that's, that's like it's going back deep. to the first question. Yes. Going Jesus. back to the first question. What, what did you wish you would have known? Failure, failure that it's going to happen no matter what. And that's true. It's hard. And also like we touched on, uh, on it for a couple seconds, but like work, the work that you have to put in is way more than the, like, 
I've not even the compensation, but like the end product, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's like, sometimes I think about it like a quinceanera or a wedding or whatever party you're throwing, all the work, all the stress, all the months, all the like shopping runs and the list and all this stuff and the money, of course, that you put in for like, what, a five hour event that just vanished in three seconds and nobody ever saw all that work let alone all that stress, all those headaches that you went through. That's Half true. the time, nobody even like helped you get through those. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's hard. And, that's and also PS, I don't think I would ever want to like plan a quinceanera or anything like that. Oof, that seems like it's a lot. Like, yeah. I would be stressed out. I would max. be like, you know what? <laughs> we ain't having it. <laughs> what are you going to do with your, if you have daughters? Done. Uh, Vámonos. <laughs> Vámonos. <laughs> I mean, you're going to hire like a wedding, not a wedding planner, but like a party planner? Mm, that would be the my aunts. They're the party planners. Okay. You know, they 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 host the parties. They know how to like set it up just right. I'll let them do it if, you know, they're still here. Yeah. But, I mean, dude, it's tough, man. I wouldn't want to be a party planner. I really wouldn't. That's it's tough. No, because just, just like send this stuff up all the time, you know, and like getting people to come and like, and do all that. Like I try not to make it as stressful for the other person, mm -hmm. but on my end, it's like, I got to grab all this stuff. Like, have you just seen like what's in front of me right now? Like I got the mic, the camera, the light, I got the green screen in the back. I mean, I'm actually in space. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? It's tough, man. It's it tough. is. It but is, but it's worth but I like it. it. Yes. Exactly. You like it and like you it. enjoy it. Yes. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun. And I and honestly, man, like I would be doing this stuff even if it wasn't in, like broadcasting it to people. Like I would be doing this stuff. Like mm -hmm. I, I have these type of conversations with people all the time, you know? And maybe that's why people like talking to me because I I like having these conversations. But who knows? Maybe I'm just yeah. a goofy little dude you know what I mean? they're just like look at this look at this fucking guy <laughs> look at this dude <laughs> look at this dude his glasses nerd <laughs> in space yeah i mean you know it's tough man but it is what, what, what are the questions you got hit me at, at this point i'm on i'm unstoppable now nothing will it, nothing will be hard now at, at this point you're an open book okay let's see i really am though like I try not. To, I try not to be now because of this podcast. But I'm too open, bro. All right. So this one: Who are the three people who have been the most influential to you? Ooh, my mom. She's the first person for sure. Uh, I was gonna say my grandparents, but can they count as one? <laughs> well, my grandparents. I think we'll give. Yeah, yeah. we'll give it. To yeah, those those three people for sure. Um, and I, I mean, obviously I have like my dad and like my other family members and, you know, other people that I look up to that I don't know. Um, uh, mom for sure, because she's, she's obviously my mom and she knows me so well. Mm -hmm. So, but I've also seen like how she is and like the things that I get from her and how, and the way that she inspires me to do things. You know, I remember when she like, when she was, when we got the, um, the sponsorship for the manscape uh i remember like I, I received the package and everything and she was like she was like so excited about it and she like gave me a high five and oh, like, we were, like we we're jumping up and Cat down I mean, yeah <laughs> and my grandparents just like all the work that they put in man i you know i didn't even talk about this last episode like i mean we did talk about it obviously but the people that didn't get to listen mm -hmm. and and I didn't really have my uh, feedback on, on them. I kind of just let them talk is that they put a lot of work in and, you know, a lot of people don't realize is that like in my case and a lot of other people's shoes, you know, their families came from Mexico, you know, with nothing, you know, just the clothes on their back and a dream, <laughs> you know, they came over right. here and just started busting it, doing whatever job paid, you know, whatever they could get their hands on. And then kind of just work their way up. So I really do, like, I really do, like, see that as, like, an inspiration. Um, you know, I have, like, I have other people. Like, I have my uncles. Like, 
they've all started like big businesses and like it's cool it's it's motivating it's actually really motivating to see everybody like my family i guess like making it out the mud man let's go let's fucking go (laughs) (laughs) bro i'm telling you and it and it's but it is also it's also it's also Mm nerve-breaking because it's like will i be able to make it like that will i be able to pull my part you know right Uh, i I feel like you have a really good like example there and if at any time you know you just definitely have to anybody you have to believe in yourself believe in yourself and i'm sure there were times i'm sure and maybe i'm taking this out of like i'm sure there are people not necessarily your grandparents but i'm sure there are people that they didn't envision themselves at the level that they've achieved Mm -hmm. um so it's yeah i mean some people are very like i want this and i'm gonna reach it i'm gonna surpass it and then other people are like i'm just gonna cruise and see where this takes me or you know i agree yeah I no path it's, it's on uh what's it called autopilot it's, yep. it's tough it's tough i i really all i can tell this to you and to the fans is that i decided to put the work in in a lot of different fields and i'm seeing results and i mean i'm telling you it feels good it's a little nerve-wracking because I feel like, you know how people say, like, uh, as fast as you go up, you can fall just as quick. Oh, mm -hmm. And, but that, you know, that could apply to anything, not just the podcast, but this could apply to, like, uh, the career, the job, like, anything that I'm up here. And, like, if I mess up, I can, you know. Quickly fall. Yeah, I can quickly fall. And I think you got to, like, humble yourself a a lot of times. You got to make sure, like, recognize who you are. Look in the mirror. And I tell this to people all the time. You look in the mirror and it's like, we in this bitch together, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and it's like, you just have to have these realization moments, man. Like, you have to. You have yeah. to. And, and, and I've had them for years, right? I think what I think what it is is that I let my mind take, take control of me sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that I think that mental health is very important. But I feel like a lot of times I've slipped up. A lot of times, you know, and I'll admit it. I've slipped up. I've fucked up. I've done my failures, man. And, 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 but it has made me a better person, I feel like. Or at least I try to be, right? Cause, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to, you're, it's going to happen, you know? It's natural. And I do agree. Like, I was trying to find a, a post. I had seen something where it was like, you know, be confident, but not arrogant and all these other things but i don't have it Mm -hmm. i didn't have it safe so if i find it i'll i'll share it but okay yeah you have to be like like you said like confident but not arrogant and then you have to have a certain mentality to get up there but also like you said be humble and humble yourself and like you know reroot yourself and and put your feet on the ground and then it can happen, you know, even if within the most successful people, people that are also still like so humble and so rooted and grounded, you know, it happens to everybody. But I think that as long as you, we keep at it and we keep practicing it and the more and like 